Welcome back, my friends. This is our fourth episode of Vestas Mountain, and today we'll be looking to develop out a kind of a lakefront park area that we now refer to as Thompson Lake. It's kind of the type of place that, while it's close to the city, it still has kind of a, a small getaway, maybe a place where you would take your family, you know, let the kids play at a small, you know, playground area. You, you hike along a small trail along the water's edge and just kind of get away from it all. Um, it's similar to some places that you might find up in the, you know, Rocky Mountain National Park area, but isn't quite as remote and isn't really true to any location in the park itself it's it's i didn't draw inspiration from those instead this is kind of a kind of a free creative effort to kind of just kind of build and see what happens so we'll let you kind of sit back and watch for a little bit and we'll see kind of what develops talk to you soon I decided to zone the area as a park in order to be able to use some of the, the, the park trail assets and to be able to have kind of a formal entrance at, at some of the building. And we set a few buildings up in place to kind of simulate, you know, little, you know, you know, substations or, you know, restroom facilities or whatever can be. Um, right now we're playing around with that, that, that playground area and I had some terrain differences that were kind of back to the playing with those rock assets again just trying to give kind of a, the idea that you know you know I'm, I'm going for more of a you know again a picture of view that if i zoom in on the playground i get a picture that gives me the view of what i want as opposed to coating the whole entire side of the mountain with these rock assets it's more of kind of a localized piecemeal thing um you can see that you know i kind of played with some of the the different assets some of the water-based assets um I'm still learning how to use um, Surface Painter, obviously. It's kind of not quite doing what I want it to do here. So if you've got any tips on how to kind of make that that, that kind of sandy, ro uh, gravelly area look right, it's just, I find that the, the brush is really strong. I wish there was a way to do kind of a lighter coating of it and still have some grass kind of coming up through, but I just wasn't able to figure that out. So if you've got any suggestions, leave those in the comments down below. I would love to hear how to do it. But for now, we're just kind of playing around with the rocks and and doing our thing here. Here I started kind of playing with some of the brush options and started to almost get that 
light coating that I wanted, but it still wasn't quite right. But for now, I went ahead and laid it out, kind of set kind of kind of a stony shoreline, and it's not horrible. It's still a little splotchy. I wish it was a kind of a more uniform gradient kind of thing, but it does kind of give the effect that we were looking for down in this area. Here I started having some issues with power on these w one or two buildings that I was adding to it. So I must have been right on the limits of the power as I added population in the last video. So I had to go look for uh, where was I putting my power sources and as you saw back in the first video I'd chosen some windmills kind of off on a distant hilltop and since I don't have to run power lines with one of the mods I have running I decided to just go ahead and put that in here. But we were quickly back in play and starting to kind of fill in the, the this hillside here if you will and you'll see me you know instead of putting a whole lot of rock right around this playground area I ended up settling on just some trees and just using the natural terrain contouring and it didn't turn out too shabby in my opinion Now we're starting to run a few more trails, you know, up into the, the higher ground above the playground, as well as the trails that kind of walk along the shoreline, if you will, a little bit more remote. And just kind of let them just kind of wander and follow the natural contours of the lake. Didn't really have a plan in mind when I started doing this, but just started kind of just laying it in. Um, here we're putting in kind of the park entrance to kind of be able to you know, let us do some things. And this is where it got kind of interesting. Just because of the natural contours of it, that trail, if, if you saw back then, you'll see it again here in a minute. Actually, it dropped a bridge in across there and it dawned on me that, hey, I could, you know, take advantage of some of these contours and maybe work, you know, in a little babbling brook kind of thing. And so here in a few minutes, we'll start to kind of switch over and start trying to figure out ways to get water into the area but it was just kind of a fluke thing that happened that kind of triggers the next couple of minutes of what you're going to see after we get through replacing a few more of the, these rock details. You'll start to see that uh, pop up here in a second. So as we were working this area a little bit, you see that another bridge on one of these trails kind of popped in. Now this one was actually a bridge on the road, and this is where I decided to start kind of working in a way to get kind of this babbling brook now. I'm still not the best at terraforming, as you will quickly see. And the next couple of minutes, as we start to kind of flush this thing out, it becomes kind of a uh, almost comical, kind of the way I'm having to chase water around and get get these things in but this is my attempt to get a little brook to come through now obviously it's a <laughs> it's more like a raging torrent of a river uh, by the time all is said and done but it does kind of add kind of an effect and give kind of a cool look to the park as we start to flush it out at first i started with you know well let's just try putting the water source in just this little bit you know like maybe it's like a little natural spring just right nearby here and then as i did that you can see whoa the water is just going crazy and it's flooding over everything. So I kind of work on getting that set right and getting the, the depth of the water and the depth of the channel so that it looks a little bit more natural. And, you know, but then, you know, as I looked at it, I was like, well, okay. So you've got this little pond in the park and that kind of seems logical, but then where's the source of that water if not, you know, if it's not a natural spring, well, maybe it's coming in from some of the higher ground. And so that sets me off on this wild goose chase up the hillside and you'll see, you know, the effects of a novice terraformer trying to figure out how to get water put into this thing. I mean, the channels are really deep, the, the side walls are really steep, you know, it just didn't quite look natural. And then you know, every time I tried something, the water just went rushing everywhere. But it led to, you know, these fluke accidents kind of led to some, some cool features that will be added in as we move up the hillside here momentarily.
So here we've got the water running, and right about now I was looking at this, you know, and while it looked cool, it was just the water's just running such, such huge volumes moving that it just didn't make sense that it was just miraculously spawning here. And so that's what triggered the thought. Well, all right, let's go try to define the source, or at least get the source out of the view of the picture that I was trying to develop. And so we start to kind of create a, a channel up the hillside and. You know, as I watch this now, <laughs> I can see that I'm kind of going against the contours, and that's going to lead me to acting like the Army Corps of Engineers trying to set up a levee system to keep the water within the channels, and it's just going to go crazy. But we just kind of get this little winding channel up the hillside. Now, I knew I was going to have to do some terraforming, you know, from, from, from the onset, and that we were going to add to it, but I just basically kind of went to the top of the hill and said, all right, at this point, we know we'll just we'll, we'll set the water source and we'll just see if we can get that to follow the channel all the way down to Thompson Lake and well <laughs> the first one in and you can see just water is just going everywhere and so it's overflowing the banks it's overflowing the channels and part of that is because I had channel directions that weren't matching with the contours and so it was just naturally flooding over surprised I didn't wash out my city at some point but here here come you know not really levees, but an attempt to now totally re-terraform this mountain. And now doing this, it doesn't look like it's a very long, but I spent several hours just kind of going back and forth, trying to make this look a little bit more natural, to reshape the mountain a little bit, to kind of get some of the fingers out there. And I've cut a lot of that footage because it's pretty repetitive, but just kind of working my way up to get that water coming from that upper source. But you can see I've got two major leaks here. Now one of them put another pond down at the bottom of the hill that you just saw, and that's you know, I was, I was like, oh, that doesn't look too bad. It looks fairly natural. So I decided to leave that, and we'll come back around to it. But then I, now I've got a huge <laughs> onslaught of water that's headed toward the highway down the other side of the mountain. So it's just back and forth, back and forth. I think I went up and down this hill about four times trying to get things locked in, get it smoothed out, get the get the contours figured out, and it's just kind of a kind of a continuation of trying to get that channel locked in and just kind of chasing leaks, if you will. But eventually we do get to it and it like I say the effect was pretty good I think. So at this point we've pretty much got the the water coming down the hill but obviously the scale of the river is much too wide so here we're trying to kind of make it a little bit narrower more fitting the, the scale of the bridges that were established both on the trail as well as on the roads and trying to kind of work our way there you know and you know just there's some challenges that pop up on this. You can see I've still got some overflow that I'm not quite sure whether that's just a graphics glitch or what's going on, but it's finding its way and some, some leaking that's happening. Um, part of the problem I had was with some of these sharp turns in the creek just to kind of make it look like it was meandering its way down. It tended to, like say, it, it tended to go perpendicular to contours at some point and then adjust and go parallel, and that's where the leaks often occur to at these corners. But now you see that, you know, I decided to think, well, where's the water from that's going to form that secondary lake that I mentioned a few minutes ago? Or, you know, where is that water coming from? And so now we're knocking a hole in the river that at one point steals a lot of the water from what's going down the hill, but it does kind of give the effect. And, you know, a, bit of, a little bit of a channel, we kind of smooth things out a little bit. And then you'll see that it starts to kind of flow on its own down the hillside, which I was okay with at that point. I have a little bit of a channel constructed, but then just kind of let it let it go and you know maybe we'll come back and kind of clean that up but that's an attempt to kind of have a secondary one come in to feed the source of that pond as we try to do it but again i'm trying to keep things kind of small and kind of to scale to kind of feed in to what's going on here you know but again that's multiple runoff coming off of that same source at the top of the hill You were starting to kind of work the lower end a little bit and I decided to try to put some rocks in to kind of, you know, again, 
set up the, the shoreline a little bit and you can see that the, the flooding is just going crazy so I know that at this point where this trail wraps around I need to kind of raise the elevation a lot and there was a mistake that was made here that I didn't realize at the time but you see the rocks that down at the discharge point that were put in that apparently they do have size and dimensions that the water looks at because inadvertently I ended up building a dam with those rocks that backed up the water and once I realized that that was the problem you know at first I started trying to kind of redo the, the you know the profile of the, of the soil and try to get things locked in and it do, does a pretty good job but I just I could never quite get on top of it and here in a minute I'm going to take those rocks out and you'll watch the water elevation actually drop and it's now perfectly balanced and back in whether it is I tried raising roads raising bridges trying to get things out of the water plane but still looking somewhat natural and that was the lesson I learned and so there the rocks moved and all of a sudden the water dropped and miraculously all my wet spots just about all of them there's still one little one up there dried up and everything looked the way that it was intended to be and so that was kind of the lesson learned so yeah, watch out putting rocks at the base of you know rivers and stuff that it will cause a backup on there but that was kind of I never knew that it would do that and that was kind of a cool lesson that was learned and something I'll remember forever so now we're back to kind of doing a little bit more of the terraforming, getting some of the rocks in place to kind of finish out the, you know, some of the, the minor detailing of, uh, of this. Um, the other thing I learned about these rock assets is that if you raise them lower the ground, it changes the shape of the rocks themselves. So that's kind of cool. So you know, they don't all look the same. I can get, you know, instead of being that kind of round blobby shape, I can now get you know, some peaks by playing with the ground elevations. You know, here I'm playing with some, you know, some riprap along the shoreline, just kind of get kind of a, a rock, uh, kind of a rocky base. You know, I go over and try to see if it, how it looks on the other side, and it doesn't look that great. So I ended up taking those away as well. Um, just kind of trying some different things. It doesn't look quite natural, so a lot of this will get removed here in a second. I'm still chasing a little bit of the flooding, but it's pretty much isolated to just one point coming underneath the bridge, and so I just got to kind of get that fleshed out and that, that channel narrowed up, and then we're in great shape for the water and everything that's happening on this. So at this point, we're starting to kind of come toward the end of the session. A few more details put in place, adding some more trees and some rocks. But, you know, hope you're enjoying the series. I'm having a lot of fun making it and actually documenting what I'm doing. Um, but, you know, leave me some feedback in the comments down below, you know, on what you'd like to see next or where we should go work next. You know, we're going to finish up the park and kind of kind of wrap things up and pretty much call it a day. So we will see you guys next time in the next video. Have a blessed afternoon, and we'll see you all later. Bye-bye.